Hey, my new old grocery getter just made 121 horsepower on the dyno jet here. How much more can we make? Well, stick around and find out. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll do a driveway cam swap on Chuck's Chevelle wagon. And while we're at it, we'll install a new timing chain, valve train components, and carburetor. Then we'll test these power pieces on our dyno jet. We'll start to work on my Mustang project car with a new rack and pinion kit and take you to Ontario for some down and dirty dragster action in our IHRA Race of the Week. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hey, welcome to the shop where we're just about to slip a new camshaft in my wagon's old 283. That is, uh, if my partner ever decides to show up. Uh, speak of the devil, hey man. What do you got there? Well, it's my new old pony, 65 Fastback GT, man. What do you think? Man, this thing looks great. How does it drive? Well, it's got a fairly late model 5.0 engine and a five speed, so it goes down the road great, but I gotta tell you, cornering with this manual steering is a pain in the, ask me what I got for it though. Well, don't keep me in suspense. A new rack and pinion setup that I thought you might help me install. Well, deal, but first, why don't you help me finish up my Chevelle over here? Fair enough. Now, you've seen us do plenty of cam swaps here on the show before. The only problem is most of them took place on an engine stand. So today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to get down and dirty under the hood like many of you would. Well, while you get dirty, I'll get the new parts ready. Great idea. Now, this old 283 could sure use a lot of help. As you can see, it's still got the original two-barrel carburetor on it. And a couple of weeks ago when I was adjusting the valves, I noticed a couple of the cam lobes were going flat. So I've already started the job by disconnecting the battery and draining the radiator. While Chuck's hard at it over there, let's check out what we're upgrading to. Our cam is a 265 dual energy grind we got from Comp Cams. It's called that because the exhaust event has more lift and duration than the intake. Now this compensates for things like inefficient port design or restrictive stock exhaust manifolds. Now anytime you get a new cam in, Need to install new lifters as well, like these that came with our kit. Hey man, aren't you ready for this yet? <laughs> no, I ain't that fast. But I tell you what, if you give me a hand, it won't be long. Good deal. We still need to remove the alternator, set the power steering pump aside, then get rid of the water pump. We remove the bottom pulleys, the balancer, the distributor comes out, then the intake, and the valve covers. Once we get the rocker arms backed off, we can go ahead and remove the push rods and the lifters. Sometimes a varnish buildup on the bottom of the lifter makes them hard to pull out of the bore, but if you keep working them up and down, eventually they'll come out. Well, now the timing cover comes off, and here's a tip for you. If you loosen the bolts of the oil pan up front here enough to let it drop down a bit, it comes off a lot easier, and the reason is, see this lip here on the timing cover? It fits up snug against the oil pan, so loosening the bolts takes off the tension. Now, before we can go any further, we need to remove the fuel pump here because it's actuated by a push rod that's driven off the camshaft. Now we can get to the timing sprocket and remove it. And finally, the camshaft. And look at this, if you screw a long bolt into the end of it, well, it gives you a pretty good handle and the leverage you need to get it out. Hey, I want to show you something here. We mentioned earlier about lobes going flat on a cam, and well, here's what we meant. Some of these, well, like this one here, are almost completely round. Now, this could be caused by bad heat treat at the factory or improper finish on the lifter face. Yeah, and dirty oil can be the culprit, too. That's in an improper break-in procedure. Now, remember, whenever you install a new camshaft, you want to keep your engine RPM above 1,500. That way, it keeps everything splash lubed in there. Oh, and don't forget, Use the special break-in lube that's included with each kit. You always want to install a new timing set with your new cam. And that's because your chain has stretched and, well, that retards cam timing. We're going to use this double roller set we got from Comp Cams, but first, 
going to take this puller and remove the old crank sprocket. Our new crank sprocket has multiple keyways. We'll install ours straight up using this old mark. After rotating the motor until this dots at the 12 o'clock position, go ahead and loosely install the cam sprocket. There we are. And rotate it until these dots line up. Then reinstall the cam sprocket with the chain and bolt it down. There. Before reinstalling this timing cover, make sure you trim back the edges of this lip here so it'll slide in easier. Oh, also, install a new front seal and a seal for the lip itself. Now, you also want to put a little dab of silicone at the corners here. It'll keep it from getting any leaks. Well, the lifters are next, so we want to give them a little bit of oil to keep them lubed up in the lifter bores. We're installing new push rods and these Magnum roller tip rockers. Now, these are investment castings that'll give us a true 1-5-2 rocker ratio, plus they'll help us maintain proper valve train geometry. Adjusting the valves with the intake off is pretty easy. What you want to do is go ahead and bottom out the lifters for the cylinder that you're working on, then move the push rod up and down while you tighten on the rocker arm. Once all the slack is gone, give it another quarter turn and you're done. I think it's time for us to cut our sponsor some slack. We'll take a short break and be back with more driveway bolt-ons after this. After the first time I let the button go, I was, I was at I was sold. Later, meet a top international model who's also a top dragster competitor in IHRA. It's our race of the week from Ontario. Stay with us. For the latest news on Horsepower TV, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Hi, welcome back to the shop. Now, while you were on break, we kept on working here. In fact, we've gone ahead and reinstalled the harmonic balancer, the fuel, water, and power steering pumps. Now we're just about ready for that new intake manifold. But first, we need to get rid of the old gaskets, and here's something that's going to make the job a lot easier and quicker to clean up. We got this valley tray kit from Standard Abrasives, and this plastic piece just snaps right down here in the valley like that. These white styrofoam pieces will help keep the crud out of the intake ports. Now, it also comes with his abrasive disc, and we'll put it to work right here. That small block's going to breathe a lot deeper with a new camshaft. But, you know, using this old two-barrel carb setup would be like making a marathon runner breathe through a straw. So we're going to upgrade the induction first by bolting on this Edelbrock Performer. It's a dual-plane aluminum intake. Good for low-end torque, but capable of making horsepower at up to 5,500 RPM. Hey, man, I'm already done with all those gaskets. Good. I'm ready to get started on this. Why don't you tell them about the car? Gladly. Now, we're going to be using a 625 CFM Road Demon carb from Grant Performance. Now, check this out. It's got an electric choke here and vacuum secondaries for good street manners and good mileage. Now, here's something I really like. It's got a clear sight glass right here so you can easily check the fuel level in the bowls. And, of course, each one of them comes with a chrome dual fuel line. Okay, we got our Mr. Gasket Ultra Seals in place and a bead of silicone at each end of the block. We're ready to drop this thing in and great timing there. Hey, I'm always in the right place at the right time. Man, that's you. Man, that powder coat looks pretty slick with that carb. Now, all that extra fuel is going to need some extra spark to light it off and of course we all know what that means more power. So we're going to be using MSD's HEI billet distributor. It's a high-tech, high-output replacement for that old point-type distributor. And here's one of the things I like best about it. It uses a one-wire hookup for the power source. Oh, and speaking of wires, hey, we're going to put the spark to the plugs with these eight-and-a-half-millimeter superconductors. Man, with all those new parts and Moroso dress-up goodies, rest of that motor looks pretty funky. We better lay down some paint. No, man, I'd rather lay down some numbers. What do you say we get on the dyno jet and see how bad we can beat that baseline? I'll deal with this later. <laughs> 
Man, we brought that 283 to life from a 121 baseline to 183 at the rear wheel. And it only took us, well, less than a grand and less than a day under the hood. Well, man, now I'm excited. What do you say we go for a ride? Undo the straps and jump in, man. Uh-uh, not so fast. Remember the deal. I help you with the wagon. You help me with my Mustang's rack and pinion project. And we'll steer you toward that right after this. Hi, right, welcome back to the shop where it's time to give my classic Fastback a turn for the better. This rack and pinion is a bolt-on conversion kit from Total Control Products that replaces the stock setup. Now it's going to give us a lot quicker steering ratio and take the slop out of that 35-year-old steering gear. Well, I've got your car in the air and your 35-year-old steering wheel already removed. Now, this rack and pinion conversion is made just for high-performance handling. Check out the CNC machined pinion housing here and the TIG welded brackets. Now it also uses a KRC power steering pump that's got an adjustable flow rate so we can tune this system to suit the driver. We begin by getting rid of all the original linkage starting with the tie rod ends. Then the center link from the pitman arm. And finally, the idler on. With the car back on the ground, you can remove the steering column. And you want to be sure to keep up with this upper spring and the column bearing. This steering box can come off next, held in place with three bolts. Now, the column has to be shortened 5 and 9 16 inches for this new shorter shaft that comes with a the kit. Then we'll install it along with this new lower bearing and finally the firewall support once we get ready to go back in with the column. After removing the inner mounting brackets from the rack assembly, both them to the control arm mounting points. The outer bracket bolts up to the frame. Install the rack assembly loosely to the mounts. Install the intermediate shaft to the column and attach it to the rack. Then tighten the rack to the mounts. I've removed the center link from the rack so I can go ahead and install our tie rod ends using the special adapter that's included with the kit. Now if your tie rod ends are worn, be sure you replace them first. The pump here mounts to the engine block using this bracket that comes with our kit. Then we just add a new belt, hook up the hoses, oh, and install this reservoir in the engine compartment. Now, don't forget, you're going to also have to take your Mustang into a front end shop for an alignment. That way you can take full benefit of this new steering gear. And we hope you'll also benefit from these words from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Next, we head to Ontario. It's the IHRA Canadian Nationals and our Red Hot Race of the Week, so stay tuned. Horsepower TV's Race of the Week is brought to you by Moroso, the leader in the automotive aftermarket performance industry. on the Mopar Parts Canadian National. This is the largest inaugural event in IHRA history. Now, there are about 550 cars in it, and can't show you all of them, but we do have a tale of two dragsters, starting with a model citizen of the sport. As a top international model, Bruno Massel travels the world, posing for fashion ads, catalogs, and magazines. Hardly the kind of guy you'd expect to find fighting for a top dragster title an IHRA sportsman competition. Well, this year, ExpressAutoParts.com has stepped up in a huge way for us, and they've made it possible for me to go and attend the full season, the full schedule, and compete for the championship. Last year, we uh, finished fourth in the country. And although the Chicago native holds his own in the pits and on the track, 
Being a male model naturally attracts some ribbon. Oh, I get a lot of flack from everybody, but it's all in good fun, though. You know, I get the, hey, pretty boy, or I get to run pretty boy this round, or don't get your hands dirty, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's all fun. It's all fun. Bruno's crew chief is his dad, who also races and runs a performance parts business. And for this father and son team, working side by side is just as important as winning. You can't, you can't buy this kind of quality and, and, and camaraderie with your own son. He's like my best friend here. I couldn't do it without Dad. I mean, he's the brains, everything behind all this stuff. He sets out the car up, so all I have to do is basically drive it. You know, I let the button go, and uh, he does all the other hard work. Few young guys run on such drastically different career tracks, but for this model racer, it's a winning combination that works. Which is most fun? I like the racing. You know, the racing is something I really enjoy. I got a passion for. And every time I hop in the car, you know, the heart starts beating a little bit. It's, uh, it's a rush. Meanwhile, how would you like to be top dog in IHRA's newest dragster class? It's called Pro Outlaw, and here you can run big blocks, small blocks, blowers, nitrous, whatever. Just make sure you got enough if you're running against a lady in this car. Weekdays, Laurie Canister works as an executive assistant for Smith Klein Beecham in Pittsburgh. She loves her job, but come weekends, this petite, polite lady heads for the track, where her main mission is to beat up on the boys. the talent that speaks out you know, it's the talent of your crew talent of the driver so when we both when me and the guys get in our cars it's strictly driver against driver it's not man against woman it really isn't well, when you take off it's like three and a half g's against your body and uh, pulls like that for about 200 feet or so and then it just levels off to a, a quick fly then and it just blasts you to the end of the track. It's a lot of fun. This 1999 Rookie of the Year not only holds the Class ET record with a 603, she leads the Pro Outlaw Pack in points. Laurie runs the only Mopar in the class, a blown alcohol small block, with ace engine builder Jeff Fowler serving as crew chief. She hasn't lifted, she hasn't uh, hasn't bobbled a bit, she's driven through everything that we've, that we've actually put the car through, so we're tickled to death. Uh, we try and take it one race at a time and win each race, but yeah, our goal is to win the championship this year. And down the road, who knows, maybe top fuel. Meanwhile, Laurie's content to smoke the competition in her Nicorette Nicoderm dragster while paving the way for other young women who want to get behind the wheel. Hopefully by me being here and doing as well as we are, it'll make it easier for other women to think, think that they can do it too. Well, on Eliminations Day, Laurie was winning up until round two when she red light. So she was a little down, but still determined. The winner of Pro Outlaw, by the way, was Neil Parker in his 48 Fiat, who ran a 621. Now the sportsman winners. Canadian John Ulinskis took the stock honors. Another Canada guy, Gianni Kantuski, took the super stock win. In Hot Rod, Paul Brown took the money as his opponent red-lighted. Andy Gregori won Super Rod by a margin of 39,000. It was Kenny Farrell in Quick Rod and a close one. Michael Lyon's opponent broke out as he won Monify. By the way, Bruno also red-lighted in eliminations, but Scott Batyek crossed the line as top dragster winner. And finally, it was Ken Langlois winning top sportsman with a near-perfect run on his 727 dialing. And now Hot Parts, brought to you by CarParts.com. Everything for your car, truck, van, or SUV. When we upgraded the steering on my new Fastback today, we overlooked an important item, the steering wheel itself. So we're going to replace the old one with this Grant Signature Series wheel. It's a 14-inch diameter three-spoke design with a carbon fiber look. Now it installs easy with adapters to fit most any application and it gives your interior a definite high-tech twist. Oh, it'll only uh, squeeze about 150 out of your budget. Hey, for you Chevy guys that believe bigger is better, 
You're going to like this new Iron Merlin 2 block from World Products. Now, it'll handle a bore of up to 4.625 inches with a 4750 arm. It's going to give you an amazing 638 cubic inches. Now, the cylinders and the decks are extra beefy to promote good sealing, and they'll accept most popular GM and aftermarket heads. Of course, the price is bound to be popular, too, starting at under $1,700. Well, whether you've got a mouse or a rat, you can keep the oil where it belongs with these reusable permaline valve cover gaskets from Moroso. This soft rubber compound is bonded to a rigid steel frame to prevent blowouts or leaks. And, well, to get a pair, just leak about $30 from your wallet. Well, that's hot parts for this week. Here's a look at next week's show. The 70s are gone, but vans are back. We'll slam a late model Astro with some hot new suspension pieces, then give it a cool new look with a body panel kit. Finally, we'll add some eye-grabbing graphics with a kit you can use in your driveway. Plus, head to Michigan where the top Mustang street machines battle it out. And remember, high-performance fun is what this show's all about. For information about the products used in today's show and more, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Horsepower TV is an RTM production.